it's Addie, and today we are watching Apollo 13. This movie won our Tom Hanks themed poll over on Patreon, and I feel like I could probably dedicate a whole month just to Tom Hanks movies and still not catch up, but we have to start somewhere. Um, as far as this movie goes, I don't know a whole lot about it. Um, I do feel like I have a slight fear of space, um, so this should be interesting to watch to see how I get through it. But here we go, this is Apollo 13. Now the important thing when you're penetrating the lunar module is your attitude and your relative speed. Mm -hmm. This thing sticks out here in front, that's called a probe. When you feel that thing slide in, everything's clicking. Alrighty. You know what a feeling in the world. What a pickup line. This is the man, Gemini 7, Apollo 8, they were Stop the first ones flight. around the moon. Yeah. This guy did 10 laps. I wouldn't mm -hmm. mind being up there tonight. God, who would? Hard day's coming. It's so cool to see him and Tom Hanks in another movie together. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Okay. Boy, look at those pictures. Armstrong is on the moon. Seven, on the moon. One small step for man, one giant leap for man. From now on, we live in a world where man has walked on the moon. Apollo 8, we were so close. I want to go back there. The best part of each one of us, the belief that anything is possible. A computer that can fit into a single room, hold millions of pieces of information. Fit into a single room. Times have changed. When are you going up again, Jeff? I'm slated to be the commander of Apollo 14 sometime late next year. If there is an Apollo 14. I mean, the movie isn't called Apollo 14. Are there any other questions? How do you go to the bathroom in space? <laughs> Very important question. Jim, can I have a minute? Something's come up. Is he going? You know that Easter vacation trip we had planned? Now, there might be a slight change in destination. Maybe, say, the moon. <gasps> We've all been bumped up to the prime crew. Of Apollo 13. They're not rushing things, are they? I mean, you're going to be ready in six months? We're going to have to get up to speed on this. Mm. Go. Wow, go. this is happening very quickly. We're going to walk on the moon. Naturally, it's 13. Lucky number 13. Gentlemen, that is the way we do that. Oh, man, that woke <laughs> me up. That's three hours of boredom, followed by seven seconds of sheer terror. Good <laughs> job, guys. You yeah, but it wasn't perfect. I want to work it again. Well, let's get it right. OK, set it up again, Frank. Mm, we're getting closer. Soft landing on the moon. Better than Neil Armstrong. Way better than Pete Conrad. <laughs> There's no competition in this whatsoever. Did you know the astronauts on the fire? Yeah, yeah, I did. I knew the astronauts in the fire. Could that happen again? Well, I'll tell you yeah. something about that fire. Um, we fixed it. Mm. It's not a problem anymore. I'm thinking about not going to the launch. It's not like I've never been to a launch before. The other wives have not done three. So just be glad when this one's over. Mm. So. I'm sure they love this part. Apollo 13, lifting Four off at 1300 hours and 13 minutes. Does it bother you that the public regards this flight as routine? It's nothing routine about flying to the moon. I can vouch for that. True. I think that an astronaut's last mission, his final flight, so that's always going to be very special. Why is this your last, Jim? I'm in command of the best ship with the best crew. I can't imagine uh, ever topping that. We've got a problem. Charlie Duke has the measles. Oh. We've all been exposed to it. Well, I've had the measles. Ken Mattingly has it. You, you want to break up my crew two days before the launch? Uh, we can predict each other's moves. We can read the, read the tone of each other's voice. Jack Swigert has been out of the loop for weeks. He's fully qualified to fly this mission. We can either scrub Mattingly and go with Swigert, or we can bump all three of you to a later mission. Jim, if you hold out for Ken, you will not be on Apollo 13. It's your decision. He wants to go to the moon so badly. Yeah. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Someone's excited. Damn. I mean, I know it's their ass if I get sick up there, but I mean, Jesus! <sighs> He's not gonna be able to go. Swigert, he'll, he'll be fine. He's strong. It'll be a hell of a mission, one for the books. Mm -hmm. Why don't I go upstairs and talk to Deke? I'm sure we can work this out. This was my call. Must have been a tough one. It is a tough call, though. I got a car to light. We're coming in too shallow. I'm going to manual. We're at 
12 G's. 12 G's. Oh, he's not out. ready. How are you feeling, Fredo? Charm broiled. Jim, could we have a word? <sighs> Dang it, he's not ready. Well, we have two days. We'll be ready. Let's do it again. Two days? And you've already been prepping for this for six months? Do it again. Can't go across that road. Night before. We don't want to okay. get any of our germs and get sick. Princess, you look beautiful. <laughs> that kid is just <laughs> chewing on the rope. <laughs> oh, his wife made it. I heard it was going to be a hell of a show. Yeah, who told you that? Some guy I know. <laughs> you can't live without me. Today's the day. Mm -hmm. Good luck, Apollo 13. Aww. Being number 13, they could use all the luck they can get. <laughs> no way. Oh. I'd say that's bad luck. It's happening. I imagine I would feel a little claustrophobic in these suits. Ah, here we go. We are go for launch. Tab leader, what's your status? We are go for launch. This must be devastating for him. This is it. Bumps and we're all in the mail. We go for launch. I could not imagine what the families are feeling right now. I can't imagine what they're feeling right now. Ooh, I would be so nervous. Alright, what's I gonna do to her? Beeping doesn't sound good. We'll be alright as long as we don't lose another one. I imagine that we might lose another one. The other engines are a go, so we're just gonna burn those remaining engines for a little bit longer. Mm. Poor guy. That new engine is how we do that. They did it. <laughs> that must be wild to experience for the time or just to experience not even for the first time oh, here hold my hand <laughs> this doesn't stop for me until he lands on that aircraft carrier howdy Philly. Mm -hmm. we're very proud and very happy when we're thrilled okay guys we're going to the moon gonna go ahead and get set for transposition and docking no ooh. oh gosh ew <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I understand why he's getting sick, but space puke is not cute. We're ready for CSM separation. Houston, this... we've got a good separation. Okay. So, because it's supposed to do that. We're going to start to pitch around and line up with the lamp. You know, Fred or Frank Borman was up chucking most of the way to the moon on Apollo 8. I'm all right. I just ate too much breakfast. 100 feet. We're getting close. Oh, this is very important. On top of it. I hope you are. How are we looking, Fred? We're not there yet. 40 feet. Come on, rookie. Park that thing. There's no room for error. Talk back. Is Barbara Paul? Go ahead and retract. Okay, good job. <laughs> that was only a little stressful. Okay, Day three. Going well so far. Oh, it's too bad we can't demonstrate this on TV. <laughs> Here it comes. Constellation Uriah. <laughs> now that's a beautiful sight. <laughs> Good evening, uh, America, and welcome aboard Apollo 13. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they're having fun. Hey, Marilyn. What's their broadcast? All the networks dumped us. One of them said we made going to the moon about as exciting as taking a trip to Pittsburgh. My son is supposed to be on. 
He's in outer space. Do they know they're not on the air? We'll tell them when they get back. If anyone from the, uh, from the IRS is watching, I forgot to file. That's no joke. They'll jump on him. <laughs> Our next broadcast will be from Frau Mora on the surface of the moon. And no one is watching it because they're not on TV. I'd say that was a pretty successful broadcast. Uh, we got a couple of housekeeping procedures for you. We'd like you to roll right to zero. So something bad and then if you now. could uh, give your oxygen tanks a stir. Good. Oh. Yeah. Hey, we've got a problem here. Huh? What did you do? Nothing. I stirred the tanks. Say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. Uh-huh. Multiple caution and warning, Houston. Oh, we've got a reset and restart. Two not reading at all. Oh boy, what's going on here? Flight. Let me get back to you. <laughs> a lot's going on here. It's, it's reading a quadruple failure. That can't happen. <laughs> it's gotta be instrumentation. Um... We got a wicked shimmy up here. Talk about bangs and shimmies up there. It doesn't sound like instrumentation to me. Honestly, we need a confirmation. What's this with you up there? An O2 flow high. Well, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe this is a caution and warning. We are venting something out into space. Definitely uh, a gas of some sort. It's got to be the oxygen. <laughs> something that they definitely need. Quiet down. Let's stay cool, people. I want everybody to alert your support teams. Let's work the problem, people. Let's not make things worse by guessing. Hey, take a look at the O2 on number one. 200 pounds mm. and falling. What have we got on a spacecraft that's good? Not much, I'll maybe. Get back to you, Jane. Yeah. <laughs> We're not gonna have power much longer. The ship's bleeding to death. Flight, I recommend we uh, shut down the reactant valves of the fuel cells. If that's where the leak is, we can isolate it. If? We can run on the good cell. Well, we you close know. them, you can't open them again. You can't land on the moon with one healthy fuel cell. From my chair here, this is the last option. Capcom, let's have them close reactant valves. 13, right, this is Houston. Uh, we want you to close react valve. Shutting down the fuel cells. Did I hear you right? Mm, they don't like it either. Yeah, tell them we think that's the only way they can stop the leak. Did he copy that? Do you copy, Jim? Yes, Houston, we copy. We just lost the moon. Mm -hmm. That's the whole reason he wanted to do this. This doesn't work. We're not going to have enough power left to get home. <laughs> this is very risky. God damn it. Uh, Houston, uh, O2 on one is still falling. But how long does it take to power up the lamp? Three hours by the checklist. We don't have that much time. Yeah. 15 minutes of oxygen and that's it. The command module will be dead. We're moving the astronauts over to the LEM. We gotta get some oxygen up there. The lunar module just became a life bulb. We need you to power it down immediately. You're gonna have to power up the LEM. You gotta get the guidance program transferred, and you've gotta do it before you're out of power in the command module. Oh, jeez. How much time? Can you give me a number? We're looking at less than 15 minutes of life support in the Odyssey. Was that 15 or 50? Either way, we gotta move. It's worse than I thought. Yeah. Now I have about 12 minutes to power up. Well, okay, it was 15 minutes. Hold on, now we have 12. Now I'm ready to power down the computer. I'm going to need your gimbal angles, Jack, before you shut down the computer. Oh, no, we're over here. You're down to uh, about eight minutes remaining. Okay, uh, Houston, check me. Uh, I need a double check of the arithmetic. Uh, yeah, you can go, Jim. Stand by, we're checking it. It's good, Flight. Okay. All right. Okay. Good here? You're good. Log him in, Fredo. Jack, turn off the IMU, switch to Surely three people did not make the same error. Colonel Laborman is here. At ABCQ. Oh, there was a special port. I should have kept that on. What do you mean there's no immediate danger? I, I just heard they're losing oxygen. Can they get back? may be in grave danger. I want to know what's happening with my husband. And you're down to about five minutes now, Jack. Well, the RCS is not yet. Houston, be aware. They don't have control? Do we miss a step here? <laughs> control. No, we just want to ask you. Yeah. Are you telling me that? Oh, my gosh. And now we're just going to be right. Good. Aquarius, watch that middle gimbal. We don't want you tumbling off into space. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that'd be bad. It's only by a very narrow margin that we're going to get Lovell, Hayes, and Swigert back alive. Why are there so many people here? Something broke on your daddy's spaceship. He's going to have to turn around before he even gets to the moon. 
I could not imagine explaining that to my child. Wow. Do we know for sure that we can power this thing back up? Uh, it's gonna get off. I imagine we don't know for sure. Let's have to deal with that later. Ooh. <laughs> this is Odyssey, signing off. Didn't think we'd be back in here so soon. Uh, Houston, how far off course do you project we are, over? From this moment on, we are improvising a new mission. Oh, come on. Well, sorry, but we'll get somebody to look at that. <laughs> Everything is just breaking. How do we get our people home? We get them on a free return trajectory. Use the moon's gravity, slingshot them around. No, the LEM will not support three guys. If there's been serious damage to this spacecraft. They blow up and they die. That is not the oh, argument. No. We're, ah, we're running out of time, people. In fact, the only thing the command module is good for is re-entry, so that leaves us with the LEM. We'll fire up the LEM engine, make a long burn, pick up some speed, get them home as quick as we can. We designed the LEM to land on the moon. Unfortunately, well, we're not landing on the moon, are we? Nope. Care about what it can do. So let's get to work. Let's lay it out. We expect loss of signal in less than one minute. And we'll hear from you again at acquisition of signal. <gasps> They're so close to where they should be. Coming up on Mount Maryland. Jim, you got to take a look at this. I've seen it. We expect loss of signal in approximately 10 seconds. Got you on the flip side. Ooh, so dark. No. Uh, there's nothing that they can do until I, they I, get I, signal back. I can't wait to see it myself. It's beautiful. Mm. I imagine he dreamed of that day, like his whole life. And he was going to get a moon rock for his son. Good to see you again. Mm. We have too, signal. So. Mm. Gentlemen, what are your intentions? I'd like to go home. Marius, we got some uh, PC plus two burn data for you fellas. You can only give our guys 45 hours? <laughs> not quite Gentlemen, there. That's not acceptable. Power is everything. What do you mean? We got to turn everything off. Now. Mm. At that rate, in 16 hours, the batteries are dead, not 45. Ooh. I've been looking at the data for the past hour. And then we finish the burn, we'll power down the limb. All right. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have a frozen command module up there. In a couple days, we're gonna have to power it up, use nothing but the re-entry battery. I want people in our simulators, working re-entry scenarios. We never lost an American in space. We're sure as hell not gonna lose one on my watch. Ken? Oh, they need Ken. They need what? his help. Oh, he has no idea. I gotta get you in the simulators. We gotta ship the land. What? Mm, There's been an explosion. No. Crew's fine so far, trying to keep him alive in the limb. Nobody's too sure how much power we're gonna have when we hit re-entry. How much power do we have to play with? Barely enough to run this coffee pot for nine hours. Yeah. Go. <laughs> Good. What do we have left in the batteries? We don't really know. You started on a procedure? Well, the engineers have tried, but I mean, it's your ship. Give me the exact same conditions we've got in there now, and I need uh, present status of every engine. It's going to end up saving the day. I hope. Let's get this show on the road. Put them in space, fellas. Aquarius, we don't want you to make any more waste dumps. The eventing may push you off course. No more waste dumps. <laughs> We're just gonna have to store it. Well. Mm. We just put Sir Isaac Newton in the driver's seat. It's running a temperature and none of them has slept I since can't the explosion. order these guys to go to sleep. The carbon dioxide. We had a CO2 filter problem in the middle modules. Anything over 15. Air judgment blackouts, the beginnings of brain asphyxia. Oh, well, we can't have that at all. So CO2 mm -hmm. levels are going to be getting toxic. I just you gentlemen invent a way to put a square peg in a round hole. We got to find a way to make this fit into the hole for this using nothing but that. Mm. I thought they so didn't much for care privacy. about the They didn't even run Jim's show. More dramatic now. Suddenly people are. Oh, landing on the moon mm. wasn't dramatic enough. Those people. Don't put one piece of equipment on my lawn. If they have a problem with that, they can take it up with my husband. Mm. He doesn't look so good. It's getting cold, all right. You don't look too good, Fredo. Mm -hmm. Some aspirin in the medical I took some. Jim, I'm all right. I never dreamed I'd ever get to do something like this. I'm a little worried about this cold affecting our, our battery efficiency. Have they called up with a re-entry plan yet? Because we're coming in too shallow. We're working on something, Jack. They had us burned too long. At this rate, we're going to skip right out of the atmosphere, and we're never going to get back. What are you talking about? How'd you huh. figure that? I can add. 
Then what if they had made a mistake, all right, and there was no way to reverse it? Do you think that gauge reading before you hit the switch? Hey, don't tell me how to fly the damn CF. Stop kicking yourself in the ass. This is not my fault! No one is saying it is. Yeah, well, tell him that. I just asked you what the gauge is reading. All right, we're not going to... And gonna... you don't oh, know! Okay, right. this is going well. <sighs> we're not going to go bouncing off the walls for 10 minutes, because we're just going to end up right back here with the same problem. Yeah, Houston, this is Aquarius. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jim, uh, could you check your CO2 gauge for our CO2 measurement has jumped four notches in the last hour. We were expecting that. Well, that's very comforting to know, Houston. Uh, what do we do about it? Yeah, we're working on a procedure down here for you. We're running out of time. What's this? That's what they got to make. An unusual procedure for you here. We need you to rip the cover off. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Find out the other materials you're going to need here are... Uh... Oh. Shit, I tore it. <laughs> we don't have time for this. Uh, what do we do if we uh, rip the bag? Can we tape it? Sure, one more bag here. It's not doing so good. We're getting close to 15. Just bring normal, fellas. Oh, uh, we're still holding close to 15. Turn off. Oh, good. Wait, that is a good. Yeah, that's a good sign. Okay. And it is still falling. Good. Yes. We did it. <laughs> Their little arts and craft project work. Damn. The sequence was wrong. We'll just have to go back and try them one at a time. You need a break, Ken? If they don't get one, I don't get one. Blanche, I was going to see Jimmy. There's been an accident. Jimmy's okay. He's all right. But he's not going to get to walk on the moon. They said he was. I know. They're all okay. They're all right. But now they're just going to try to figure out a way to get them home. Don't you worry, honey. If they could get a washing machine to fly, my Jimmy could land it. Oh, dang, that's the part that got me. <sighs> You'll be happy to hear that we contacted President Nixon. He's gonna grant you an extension on your income taxes. <laughs> Great news. That's wonderful news. He's just running a fever of 104. Oh. The entire Western world. Oh, they're taking. Knowing oh, they're how taking my off. kidneys are functioning. <laughs> He's not dying. Don't Flight, worry. I just lost level. You just had a drop out on your biomed sensors. I'm not wearing my biomed sensors. Guess they can't make him. Okay, Jim. <laughs> Copy that. Copy that. Oh, I guess they're all doing it. Why? <laughs> now I'm losing all three of them. It's just a little medical mutiny, Doc. I'm sure the guys are still with us. They are, for now. Day six, jeez. Gene, it, it's not the velocity, it's the angle. At this rate, they nick the Earth's atmosphere and bounce off into space. We never get it back. Uh, Jim, we've got another course correction. Be advised, it's gonna take Fredo and I a while to power up the computer. Uh, negative on that, Jim. Spare power for the computer. Houston, mm. without the computer, what do we use for orientation? If we can keep the Earth in the window, flying manually... All I have to know is how long do we need to burn the engine? I guess that's the best we can do, Glenn. We're out of time. We're gonna burn the engines and steer it manually, attempting to keep the Earth in the window. Okay, this is gonna take all three of us. You up to this, Fredo? Mm, I'm with it you. Has to be. You are go for the manual burn. She's burning. Oh yeah. Yeah, she's burning. That was a stressful 30 Houston, seconds. we have shut down. Good work. Good. Good. Giving our guys enough to survive till re-entry. Good. Well done. Good. They're gonna need all these systems, Jan. We do not have the power, Ken. Let's start from scratch. Clear the board. Mm -hmm. I don't know where the hell we're going to find it. And I asked him recently if he ever was scared. No, they, they seem to work out. You, uh, you never know what, what events are going to transpire to get you home. Spacecraft Commander Jim Lovell, no stranger to emergencies. We sure could use the re-entry procedure up here. When can we expect that? We just can't throw this together at the last minute. Jim, this is Deke. They don't know how to do it. They have Ken Hello on Hello there, Deke. What's the story? Ken Mattingly's in the simulator right now. Ken's working on it. So hopefully that'll make them feel better. I know this sequence works, John. The sequence looks good. We're just over budget on the amperage. We know they have some power left in the limb batteries, right? We have an umbilical that provides 
power from the command module to the limb. Reverse the flow and see if we can draw these four amps from the limb batteries before we cut it loose. You're going to lose a lot in the transfer, Ken. All we're talking about here is four amps. Fine so far. Say again. You're under the limit. Keep going. Nine. Getting so close. I think we got it, buddy. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, Ken, for being here. Now I'm kind of glad that Ken didn't go into space. Aquarius, Houston. Yeah, we read you, Ken. Our friend. I don't have the measles. <laughs> oh. Just distract her when the heavy predictions come in. This is Neil Armstrong and this is Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> Are you boys in the space program too? Yeah, you could say that. Ken, I'm, uh, well, I'm having trouble reading my own writing. I guess I'm a little more tired than I thought. Uh, don't worry, Jack. I'll talk you through it. Close main bus B. <sighs> now, Ken, there's an awful lot of condensation on these panels. What's the word on these things shorting out? Something they hadn't considered. We'll just uh, take that one at a time, Jack. Okay, 13. We're coming up on every interface. It's almost like they're underway. Now, how could they be underway? We didn't land on the moon. Rocks. While Jack's working on a power up, we'd like you and Fredo to transfer some ballast. Well, you got to get the weight right. We were expecting you to be toting a couple hundred pounds of moon rocks. Okay, Jack, we're ready to see if the computer will accept a blink of the re entry data now. Come on. It worked. Right? A blink completed. Okay, okay. That's a good sign. Oh, okay, let's go. Things are going Take well a look so at your hand. How we do it? Let's as go. well as they can. You got her back up, Ken. Boy, I wish you were here to see it. Mm. I'll bet you do. Ken is literally saving the day. We are looking at a typhoon warning on the edge of the prime recovery zone. Are you kidding me? Can we get a freaking break? We have service module jettison. Okay, Houston, our service module is free. One whole side of this spacecraft is missing. Yeah. Our whole panel is blown out, right up to our heat shield. The heat shield. Worst of all, if the pyrotechnics that control the parachutes have been damaged, the chutes may not open at all. Hmm. It's about time to bail out of this ship, Fredo. Sir, you okay? You okay? Oh my gosh, we just have to make it a few more hours. Well, just a little longer. That water in the South Pacific. It's 80 degrees out there. Then they'll just thaw out. Uh, we're coming up on limb jettison. Stand by. Sorry, Jack. This is an old habit. Kind of used to the pilot seat. She's yours to fly. What is it? We have lunar module jettison. Mm, all right. It sure was a good ship. Farewell, well, Aquarius. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Kept them alive up until now. At least they're ready for them. As ready as you can be, I guess. Their heat shield could be cracked, and their parachutes might be three blocks of ice. <laughs> yeah, a lot could go wrong. I guess a lot has already gone wrong up till now. Flight, they're still showering a bit up there. Do you want to tell them? Is there anything we could do about it? Not now, Flight. And they don't need to know, do they? Copy that. Okay. I wonder what else they don't know. I know what the problems are, Henry. Mm -hmm. It'll be the worst disaster NASA's ever experienced. I believe this is going to be our finest hour. Expect entry interface in 45 seconds. 35 oh, seconds there, entry there it is. There's the storm. It's been a privilege flying with you. Uh, yeah, you don't get emotional. You don't get emotional. Ah! Here we go. Flight, we have loss of radio contact. Expect to regain signal in three minutes. They just have to wait for three minutes. They could die in those three minutes. This is the roller coaster of all roller coasters. Come on, heat shield. Come on. One minute all just and waiting. 30 seconds to end of flight. No re entering ship has ever taken longer than three minutes for the command module survive the intense Come on, re entry. Heat shield. Mommy, you're squishing me. <laughs> Two, one. Okay, flight, that's three minutes. We are standing by. Odyssey, Houston, do you read me? Odyssey, this is Houston, do you read? We're about to learn whether or not that heat shield stood the inferno of reentry. Three minutes, 30 seconds, stand by. Uh, three minutes, Odyssey. 30 seconds? That's not a good sign. 
That's four minutes standing by. Oh my gosh. was called a successful failure and that we returned safely but never made it to the moon. Ken Mattingly orbited the moon as command module pilot of Apollo 16, having never gotten the measles. <laughs> my man Ken! The seven extraordinary days of Apollo 13 were my last in space. I watched other men walk on the moon and return safely. I look up at the moon and wonder, when will we be going back? Wow, that was intense. Woo! I I went so long through the movie without like getting teary-eyed, so I didn't expect that it would hit, and then it did. I I don't even know what to say. That was just like it was so suspenseful the whole time, and then those four minutes where they couldn't contact them, you just didn't know. Um, and oh, they survived. They survived. I like that they called it a successful failure because, you know, they all made it back alive. So that's all that matters. But, whoo, wow, I really liked it. Um, and I mean, everyone was fantastic in it. And my man, Ken, <laughs> I I was like so heartbroken that he wasn't able to fly. Um, and it's funny that he didn't end up getting the measles. Um, but then he he's the one that ended up saving the day. Uh, thank you, Ken. I love you, Ken. Oh, that was a great movie. Well, that was Apollo 13. Wow. Thank you for watching. Um, and I'll see you next time.